Tonight's presentation will discuss the purpose of the hearing, the needs and goals of this study, as well as the preferred alternative and its potential impacts. You will then have an opportunity to comment on the project. There are three primary components to tonight's hearing. First, the open house, which occurred prior to this presentation where you were invited to view the project displays and to speak directly with the project team and provide your comments in writing or to the court reporter. Second, this presentation, which will explain the project purpose and need, study alternatives, the potential beneficial and adverse social, economic, and environmental impacts, and anticipated costs. Third, the public hearing also serves as an official forum providing an opportunity for members of the public to express their opinions regarding the project. A formal comment period will follow this presentation, where you will have the opportunity to provide oral statements at the microphone or you may provide your comments directly to the court reporter or in writing. In addition to the court reporter in the cafeteria, a court reporter is available here in the auditorium to document comments. CFX follows a project development process for new alignment expansion projects. At each step in the process, the project could be placed on hold to be revisited in the future. This exhibit, displayed at tonight's meeting, shows that we are currently in the Project Development and Environment, or pd and study phase. A pd and study has three main components, an engineering component which consists of the development and analysis of potential design solutions, an environmental component which evaluates potential impacts to the natural, social, and physical environments, and a public involvement component to inform and involve all interested parties in the development of the proposed transportation project. The Point Sienna Parkway Extension pd and study will determine if a limited access facility between the north end of the Point Sienna Parkway Bridge and County Road 532 is viable and fundable in accordance with CFX policies and procedures. The study area limits are outlined in red and are generally described as County Road 532 on the north, east of the Osceola and Polk County line on the east, Ronald Reagan Parkway on the south, and west of Sandy Ridge Drive on the west. The need for a transportation project arises from deficiencies, issues, or concerns that currently exist or are expected to occur within the study area. The six project needs that serve as justification for the proposed Point Sienna Parkway extension are Enhance mobility from County Road 532 to Point Sienna Parkway. Reduce roadway congestion and delays on local roadways. Expand regional connectivity. Provide transportation infrastructure for planned growth. Provide consistency with local plans and policies. And enhance safety. The proposed Point Sienna Parkway extension has been an identified need for several years and has gone through a number of steps in the project development process with the former Osceola County Expressway Authority and the Central Florida Expressway Authority. In March 2018, CFX considered results of a concept, feasibility, and mobility study for the Point Sienna Parkway extension and, in July 2018, initiated this PD&D study. The evaluation of alternatives and the development of the preferred alternative were closely coordinated with project stakeholders. Public involvement meetings began in September 2018 and have continued throughout the study process. A total of 33 meetings have been held. Representatives from CFX and the consultant team were available at each meeting to discuss the project and answer questions. The public involvement effort for this project included three scheduled public meetings, including tonight's public hearing, three environmental advisory group meetings, three project advisory group meetings, and several meetings with project stakeholders, including discussions with the Lofman community. All input received was considered during refinement of the alternatives and the development of the preferred alternative. The proposed typical section consists of a 330-foot right-of-way width and would accommodate an initial four lanes. The proposed typical section also provides a median width of 92 feet to accommodate a future widening to eight lanes, including potential multi-use lanes in the median. Preliminary alternatives were developed using this proposed typical section. The study area includes several constraints which were considered in developing and evaluating the various alternatives. These include the Reedy Creek Mitigation Bank, wetland areas, 
numerous community resources, several major utility facilities, businesses and residences, and the Lofman community. The initial study alternatives, as shown here, were presented at the public meeting in September 2018. Those alternatives were further refined and subsequently designated as Alternatives 1A, 4A, and 5A and were presented at the March 2019 public meeting. Further refinements to Alternative 4A resulted in greater impacts to the Reedy Creek Mitigation Bank and, as such, Alternative 4A was eliminated from further analysis. Tonight, we will present Alternatives 1A and 5A. Evaluation aspects of Alternative 1A included Decreased impacts to wetland, conservation, and mitigation areas. Increased impacts to residential and non-residential parcels. Reduced impacts to the historic Lofman community area. A projected daily traffic volume of 18,000 vehicles in the year 2045 and a projected cost of $297 million. Evaluation aspects of Alternative 5A included The required relocation of utilities Bridging wetland areas in the Reedy Creek Mitigation Bank and Upper Lakes Basin Watershed Constructing a cul-de-sac on Ronald Reagan Parkway just east of the Sereno development Increased impacts to wetland, conservation, and mitigation areas Decreased impacts to residential and non-residential parcels. A projected daily traffic volume of 25,200 vehicles in the year 2045. And a projected cost of $280 million. At the request of Polk County staff to provide additional access to the Point Sienna Parkway extension, slip ramps at Ronald Reagan Parkway were incorporated and analyzed. This graphic illustrates Alternative 5A with slip ramps to Ronald Reagan Parkway. Evaluation aspects of this alternative included The incorporation of slip ramps increased impacts to the Reedy Creek Mitigation Bank. Increased impacts to residential and non-residential parcels. Decreased projected daily traffic volume to 15,200 vehicles in the year 2045 and Increased the project cost to $315 million. The Alternatives Evaluation compares the performance of each viable alternative and quantifies the potential impacts to the natural, social, cultural, and physical environment. The evaluation analysis and potential impacts of each of the alternatives studied is summarized in an Alternatives Evaluation Matrix, which is on display at tonight's meeting. After evaluating the alternatives, the study team identified Alternative 5A without slip ramps to Ronald Reagan Parkway as the preferred alternative. This alternative has the lowest social impacts and lower natural resource impacts than would occur if the slip ramps to Ronald Reagan Parkway were incorporated. This alternative also has the lowest total cost and the highest traffic volume, which aids the financial feasibility of the project as a CFX tolled expressway. The preferred alternative begins at the northern end of the existing Point Sienna Parkway Bridge and extends along the Osceola County side of the Osceola and Polk County line. It includes two extended bridges over wetlands within the Reedy Creek Mitigation Bank and Upper Lakes Basin Watershed. An interchange will be provided at US 1792 to provide local access. A single point interchange design has been utilized to minimize right of way impacts and reduce traffic signal wait times. US 1792 will be widened to four lanes in the vicinity of the interchange to provide for more efficient movement of local traffic. The preferred alternative then extends northwest, bridging over Old Tampa Highway and the CSX Railroad. 
The expressway also transitions into Polk County in this area. Existing utilities, including power transmission towers and underground gas pipelines, will be relocated to the west side of the expressway from north of County Road 532 to Old Tampa Highway. The preferred alternative ends at County Road 532 as an at-grade intersection. However, the design of the intersection allows for conversion to an interchange should the Point Siena Parkway extension be directly continued to Interstate 4. As part of this CFX project, County Road 532 will be widened to four lanes in the vicinity of the intersection as well as a distance of one mile to the west. Osceola County will continue the widening of County Road 532 to Lake Wilson Road on the west. These combined improvements will provide four lanes of travel from the Point Siena Parkway extension intersection with County Road 532 to Interstate 4. Following identification of the preferred alternative, the study team conducted more detailed analysis to refine potential impacts. Within the study area, eight historic resources and 11 archaeological sites were identified, but all were determined ineligible for listing on the National Register of Historic Places, except potentially the old Kissimmee Road, Old Tampa Highway. The project includes bridging this resource and no adverse impacts are anticipated. No impacts to any historic resource or archaeological site are anticipated under the preferred alternative. The project will not impact any parks or recreation areas. Biologists performed desktop and field surveys and mapped wetlands throughout the project area. Under the preferred alternative, there would be approximately 66 acres of impacts to wetlands. Unavoidable impacts to wetlands will be mitigated. Because avoidance and minimization measures were implemented, no adverse impacts to listed species are anticipated. Gopher tortoise are present in the study area. Prior to construction, a complete survey of gopher tortoise burrows will be required along with associated permitting and relocation. Surveys for sand skink, listed plants, and other state-listed species will be updated as needed during design. All natural and human environmental resources and impacts are described and addressed in the Project Environmental Impact Report. As part of this project, right-of-way acquisition of private properties will be required. A CFX right-of-way specialist is here this evening and will be happy to answer your questions and describe the CFX property acquisition process. A preliminary cost estimate that includes construction, right-of-way acquisition, mitigation, and other design and administrative fees has been prepared for this project. The total cost for implementation of the project's preferred alternative is presently estimated at $280 million. The evaluation and analysis from the engineering and environmental studies conducted for this project were documented in a series of reports. These reports and preliminary plans showing the proposed improvements are available here tonight for anyone who wishes to examine them. Project information is also available for review on the study website, accessible at cfxway.com. The study website is continually updated with study documents. You are able to navigate to the study website from the CFX homepage, or you can use the shortened web address shown here. All of the materials presented at tonight's public hearing will be posted on the study webpage within five business days. There have been various opportunities for the public to provide input on this project. We welcome your oral or written comments. At the conclusion of this presentation, staff here this evening will distribute speaker cards to those in the audience who have not received one and would like to make a statement. A court reporter will record your statement and a verbatim transcript will be made of all oral proceedings at this hearing. If you do not wish to speak at the microphone, you may present your comments in writing or directly to the court reporter at the comment table in the cafeteria. Every comment method carries equal weight. Written comments received or postmarked by September 12, 2019 will become a part of the public record for this hearing. All written comments should be mailed to the address shown on the slide or in your handout.